Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to drag the image from my desktop directly into the photo P window, which I think is a really good way to load images, it's super quick. So the first thing we need to do is to select the object. And the second step is to replace the background. And we're going to do this in as little steps as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is press the W key, which is a shortcut for the magic wand tool, or you can just go to the toolbar at the left side here and select it. You could be on quick selection or object selection. It doesn't matter as long as you're in one of the tools in the magic wand sub menu. And by just being in that, you'll see a select subject button appear in the top center here. Now ignore all these parameters to the side like tolerance and the feather. They don't apply to select subject. They only apply to the magic wand tool itself. So the select subject is just a one click. It's just a one button deal. So we're just going to press it. And I'm just going to do all this real time and it's going to process. And as you can see, it's a little bit small. I'm going to zoom in. We've now got the marching ant selection around our object. Now, admittedly, this is quite an easy one for it because there's a lot of contrast between the background and the foreground objects. And, you know, there's not like hair or any kind of soft organic edge. But having said that, it's still a very impressive cutout for literally seconds. And we can check what that selection's like by clicking on the layer mask icon. Now we've got it selected and it's going to just remove that background. And we can see what a nice cutout that is. And if you want to get even more of an idea of the cutout, like the quality of the cutout, hold the Alt key and click on your layer mask icon. And that will show you a black and white preview of the edge of the mask. And as you can see, it's nice and smooth. It's got a little bit of feathering built in, but not too much. Um, it's just a really nice quality selection in, in super quick time. But for this example, I don't actually want to cut it out. So I'm just going to undo that a couple of steps and get back to the selection. So we've got our object selected, but we want to change the background. We don't want to change the object itself. So we need the opposite of this selection. So to inverse the selection, you can press Shift, Command, or control if you're on a PC, and I is a shortcut to invert the selection. Um, it's hard to see here, but it has inverted it, so now it's selecting all the white areas. Or you can just go up to the select menu at the top and click inverse, and it'll do the same. So now we've got the inverse of the watch selected, i.e. the plain background. We're now gonna come across to the spot healing brush tool at the side, J is a shortcut for that. We're going to go into this drop down menu. So click and hold on to the icon and it will come up with this menu. And we're going to go to magic replace. So now all we need to do is go into the new content section here and type what we want to see. If we just type in watch in a puddle of water. So how you want to use this is with language wise, you want it to be natural language, but just tell it what you want to see. So don't give it instructional guides. So don't put like, um, create image of watch in water, nothing like that. Just put what you want to see. So I'm going to click replace and we'll just let it process to see what we get. Now I'm doing this real time at the moment. It might not get a good result straight away. Okay, we got a good result straight away. Sometimes with this, it's a numbers game and you have to click around a few times and give it a few chances to give you, you know, the best result that you're looking for. But what we're going to do now is off camera, because I don't want to bore you, I'm just going to go back to the magic and replace tool and I'm just going to click the replace button a few more times and just see if I can get a result that I like a little bit more. Okay, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. This was just one more click since I cut the video off. This was the next clip, and this is kind of exactly the thing I was looking for. There's a couple of tiny problems, and I'll show you how to fix those really easily. So one of the problems we have is it's created this amazing background with the reflection, the watch and everything. I'm so happy with how this looks. But as you can see, it's added a bit of an extra watch piece outside here. But that's not a problem because we're in Photo P. We can easily fix that. So I'm going to go down and create a blank layer by clicking on the blank layer icon. And because we've still got the selection highlighted here, I'm gonna actually put a layer mask on that. So I'm gonna click the layer mask option. And so now, if we alt click on the layer mask, we can see we've got the same selection as we'd use to create the background, but as a layer mask. And why this is um, very useful is now on this blank layer, we can do things like clone and do some other tools, but it will obviously only affect the outside layer. So it won't affect the watch because we've got the layer mask. 
So I'll just show you really roughly. Press S for the clone stamp tool. Current in below. I'm gonna right click on my mouse, or my tablet, pen. And I'm just gonna bring the hardness right down. So we've got a nice soft brush. And then holding Alt and clicking to select the sample, we can then um, just start to clone away those bits that we don't we don't want. And we can't go into the strap because that layer mask on the layer is preventing us from doing that. So it means we can just be a little bit more carefree. I was going to say careless, but that doesn't sound very good. We could be a little bit more carefree um, and loose with our cloning and cleanup. Now, I know there's some repeating patterns here. This cloning doesn't look great at the moment. See, my philosophy when it comes to cloning and healing and photo, Pete, is just get sort of 80% of the way there quickly so you can so you've got more of a clarity of what you're looking at and then go in and refine exactly what you need to in terms of getting rid of any little repeating marks or obvious clone artifacts. So what I tend to do is just zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing a little bit closely. Make the brush a bit smaller, a clone brush that is, and now just go in and just patch in over any little repeating marks or anything like that. Anything that's a telltale sign of like bad cloning. Um, if you try and do this, I find anyway, if you try and do this like perfectly as you go on something like this, it can actually end up taking longer than if you do a, like a slightly rougher job quickly and then just go back in and just quickly dab away any bad areas and sort of repeating patterns and things like that. That's just how I like to work. Um, but obviously if you want to take a little bit more time as you go, that's completely your call. So I'm just going over it now, having a look. And I think this is looking really good. Now, one thing I want to do here is just to add a bit more of a punch. So we're going to go down to the adjustment layers menu in the bottom right corner. And I'm going to actually create a curves adjustment layer. Right. So all we're going to do on this is I'm going to click in the highlight area. So it's more the sort of right hand side of the of the curve. Drag it up slightly and then go to the shadow area, which is the left hand side, drag a point down slightly. And that gentle S curve is just gonna add a little bit of contrast to the image, which just is gonna help it just pop a little bit. Don't wanna push it too far because I don't wanna lose all those highlights 